الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد Today inshaAllah we will talk about a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam defined Islam defined the Islam so first of all this hadith reported by Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma and I said anhuma like may Allah be pleased about them both because he is a sahabi and his father also a sahabi and subhanallah he became Muslim before his father even though they are like and this is a little bit confusing they are almost at the same age the, the, uh, the, the people of Ta'rikh when they report their age they said the difference between them only 11 to 12 years that's it that's the only like only 11 or 12 years difference between them so there is they like, almost at the same age subhanallah so abdullah bin am bin al as he became Muslim and went from, he did Hijrah from uh, Mecca to al Medina on the seventh year of Hijrah. And his father on the eighth, he became Muslim. His father was from Duhat al Arab. Duhat means he was so smart, like he was well known among all the Arab land as the smartest one and his son Abdullah he was known as the best worshipper he was worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so hard that even his father complained to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam many times even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopped him from doing a lot of ibadahs because sometimes he goes so far. When, when his father uh, find him a lady from Quraysh, which is very honorable lady. And then he asked the lady about his son just to make sure like everything goes well with his first marriage. She said, he never came to me because he's praying all the nights and he's fasting during the day. That's why he complained to the Prophet Sallallahu and then the Prophet Sallallahu stopped him from doing such like hard ibad. That's why when, when he getting old, he said, I wish if I accept the ruhsa from the Prophet Sallallahu because, because he was like arguing with the Prophet Sallallahu He was fasting all the days and doing qiyam all the nights. And he said, I used to read the whole Quran in the night. And that's like with, with the period that the Quran has revealed the Prophet Sallallahu to this point. He was so like smart and he has the ability to do this. But when he getting old, this ability become less and less. That's why he said, I wish if I get the ruhsa from the Prophet Sallallahu so the Prophet Sallallahu when he knows about this, he said, no, it's enough to fast three days each month. <coughs> but he said, no, I want to do more. So he said, like seven, ten. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi stopped with him to the half of the month. Like fast one day and break your fast <coughs> for the other. And he said, this is the best Siyam, Siyam, Dawood and Salaam. And even with reading the whole Quran <coughs> over the night, the Prophet ﷺ doesn't accept this. He said like, every ten, every ten days, and then every week, and then every three nights, and he doesn't accept to read the whole thing in the one night. Like you have to be like divided. 
So, because when you promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you keep ibadah, then you get less, just like you neglect in the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he wants him to start the ibadah that he can keep. That's why the Prophet said, the best ibadah, the ibadah that you keep in your daily life. So that's why when, when he gets in all, he said, I wish I accept that from the Prophet Sometimes we do things and then we regret. So we should be sure whatever we offer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a thing that we can keep in our daily life. Because if you say I will pray like 1,000 rak'ah each night. So you say this, and this is your promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A promise you should keep, but you are not able to keep this. No one can keep like these uh, kinds of ibadat if it's too much. So he was well known as really pious and worship Abdullah bin Amr bin al As. And subhanAllah, in the time of fitna between the Sahaba, he was with the army of Muawiyah against the army of Ali bin Abi Talib. And he actually regret this. And he said, when I witnessed this battle, I didn't fight, I didn't kill anyone, I didn't raise my, my uh, sword. I didn't hit anyone. So, subhanAllah, he was saved. And when he saw Ammar bin Yasir was killed in this battle, he said, because he saw two people like fighting each other, who killed Ammar bin Yasir to get the money? And he said, you shouldn't actually fight for this. Because I hear the Prophet وسلم, said, "Taqtuluhu fi al bari," like he he will be killed by the bari, by the the one who make fault, or the one who like make the mistake, or the one the mistaken people. So you shouldn't be proud of this. And he when he was asked why why like why you join this this party if you think they are not right. He said, when my father went to the Prophet وسلم, he asked me to obey my father. Madam Hayyan. The Prophet, the Prophet وسلم, said, obey your father when he's still alive. So my father commanded me to be with this army. Because his father joined Muawiyah, he was on Egypt, on, on, on Misr at that time. He was the leader and he was with Muawiyah army. So he ordered him to join the army. So he obeyed his father, but he doesn't fight. He but said, he I will not he fight. He confessed that the uh, of Muawiyah was wrong. Yes. He yes. He said, he said, he said right away, mm -hmm. he said, I will not kill any Muslim. I will not raise my sword against Muslim. I'm only here because of my father. And not because my father ordered me. Because the Prophet ﷺ ordered me to obey my father. And I can't disobey him. He said, you have to be here. And I asked him, he doesn't allow me to leave. So subhanAllah, he's, he, he even though he was in this army, but he said, my reason is my father, nothing else. SubhanAllah. So Abdullah bin Abd bin al-As, he's uh, very pious among the Sahaba. And he was reading the Quran, and he was allowed from the Prophet Sallallahu to write the hadith. Because the Prophet Sallallahu asked the Sahaba not to write the ahadith. But he accept for Am Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As to write the ahadith. That's why Abu Hurairah, he said, Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As, he's better than me with the hadith. Even though Abu Hurairah narrated more hadith than Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As. 
because Abdullah, Abdullah bin Amr al As almost narrated like 700 hadith. In Bukhari, almost, uh, in Bukhari and Muslim, almost seven. In Bukhari alone, eight. And in Muslim, 20. So Abu Huraira, he has only in Bukhari, Muslim, like 700, 800 hadith. So there is no like comparison between them. What Abu Huraira said, he knows better than me in hadith because he wrote all the hadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu in some pages and he called it as sahih as sadiqa the truthful pages. The truthful pages. And he was even like know the Arabic and the Syriani language. And he used to read the Torah and he knows the Torah very well. And that's really expected from a guy who spent the whole night reading Quran and like worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fasting. And even like he doesn't agree with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants him to reduce his amount of worship. Usually the Prophet sallallahu pushed people to worship. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa needs to tell him that he fasts some days and break his fast for the others just to convince him to reduce his ibadah because he knows him and he knows him as very good uh, sahabi and subhanallah he, he left a lot of knowledge and they said Imam Ahmed took some of uh, the ahadith in his in his Musnad. So this is Abdullah bin Amr bin al As, and he reported this hadith that also in Bukhari and Muslim. And this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu said, "Al Muslim, the Muslim, man salim al Muslimun bil lisanih wa yadih." He, the Muslim, who the people get actually saved or he wouldn't harm the Muslims either with his tongue nor with his hand and Al-Muhajir Al-Muhajir the immigrant which is a status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to Al-Muhajirin to the immigrant from Mecca to al Madina, and it's very high status Man hajra manaha Allah an Whoever leaves or make immigration from whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. So if you leave what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden, you are a muhajir. And if you don't harm Muslims whether with your tongue or with your hand, you are Muslim. So now, this is how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam defined the Muslim. And in another hadith that narrated by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, that the Prophet Sallallahu was asked, Ayyul Islami Afdal, which Islam is better? He said, Man salim al-Muslimun min lisanihi wa yadi. Whoever that leaves harming Muslims with his tongue and with his hand. And SubhanAllah, if you find how the Prophet Sallallahu defined the Islam and, and Muslims, you will find it's, he asked them not to harm people because this is the result of Islam. If you apply Islam in your life, you wouldn't harm people with your tongue nor with your hand. And Imam Nawi said, لا بقول ولا بفعل Not with a talk, not with an action. You will never harm any Muslim. This is if you are a true Muslim, a real Muslim. You apply the Islam in your, in your life. And if you find in this hadith, usually people, they said, 
you will not use your hand to harm people or use your tongue because the tongue is making damage less than the hand. But the Prophet ﷺ said, Bilisani, he made the tongue at the first level and then the hand. And this is the reality if you think about it. You will find the tongue make damage more and worse than the hand. Sometimes you can't even fix and it's enough that the kuf it's a word you say it in your tongue. To associate with Allah, to deny Allah, it's a word. And the Islam, La ilaha illallah, it's a word you say it. That's why the Prophet said, the slave of Allah sometimes say a word he doesn't even care about. If it's mir ridwanillah, if it's from the blessings of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise his level in Jannah. And sometimes he say a word. Min sakhatillah. It's from the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will drop him in the hellfire with this word. It's one word. The Prophet said a word. Only one word. And this if you imagine that the kufr is one word, you will realize why he will drop him in the hellfire. And there is levels up to this. Sometimes you hurt your brothers with some words. And if you, if you go to the Hadithatul Ifq, you will find people, they even, some Muslims, Muslims, they harm the Prophet ﷺ by talking about his wife. And he used to go to the member and he said, there is some people harming the Prophet by talking about his wife. And by Allah, I didn't see anything bad. Not about my wife and not about Safwan ibn Mu'attil, the, the, the guy that they talk about. So he said, I know them both. So sometimes like these words, it can be really harmful. It's enough like they made something and talked about the Prophet That's why they said, the scholars, they said, It's the most dangerous organ in the body. They said this really can drop you in the hellfire. And this is how the Prophet ﷺ actually said to Ma'ad, Ma'ad bin Jabir when he was asking about Islam and he described to him like Islam is to, work, to believe in Allah, uh, performing salah, establishing the salah, doing siyam. And he said, Ala ukhbiruka bi bilaki dhalika kulli. Don't want you to tell you a thing that will make you own everything. Then the Prophet ﷺ touched the tongue. And he said, hold on this. Hold on this. So Ma'ad said, O Prophet of Allah, Allah will charge us with what we are saying. And then the Prophet ﷺ gets angry. He said, Takaletka ummuk. Like, it's a word like when, when you have a ghafla, when you forget an important thing. So he told him, he said, وَهَلْ يُكَبُّ النَّاسِ Like, the people wouldn't be thrown to the hellfire on their faces or on their backs in another narration. إِلَّا حَصَائِدَ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ Except the result of what they say, the result of their tongues. So imagine, like, most of people, they go to the hellfire on their faces, on, on their backs, they throw it in the hellfire because they are tired. And wallahi, we think the tag is like, it's easy whatever we say, but it's not. 
if you think about it, if you're talking badly about a brother, wallahi, you're making a damage. Even like if, if you if you hit him and you apologize, it will stop. But if you say something bad, you just pass some bad thing to other people. They will keep saying these bad things about the brother. So even if you stop and you go in front of all people and say, I apologize. And I'm sorry to say this. And it's not true. Some people will continue doing this. And some people will register it. And it will be in the books. Just like Hadithatul If. When the Prophet Sallallahu and he is the Prophet Sallallahu One guy talked about his wife. And they said almost for one month, there is no revelation to the Prophet Sallallahu to clear out everything. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was sick. She stayed in her house. She they didn't know anything about what they said about her. But people keep saying bad things. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the wahi, clear out all the matter. And then nothing left. But still, whoever started this, it will be in his scale on the day of judgment. But as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, maybe it's good for us. At least we know how bad can we be with one word that we say with our time. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam defined the Muslim, he said, the Muslim, he will not harm people with his tan nor with his hand. And the muhajir, man hajra ma Allah an. And the muhajir, by the way, it's the reputation of the people who immigrant from Mecca to Al Madian. And there is two kinds of hijrah. There is hijrah zahira and hijrah batina. Just like Ibn Qayyim said. With your body is to leave the place of kufr and go to place of iman. And why is that? Because if you stay in the place of kufr, they will stop you from practicing your deen. So you have to go to a Muslim society when you can practice your deen. And there is two hadiths actually talking about this hijrah, the, phys the, the physical hijrah. One said, لا هجرة بعد الفتح There is no immigration after the Fath of Mecca, the Concord of Mecca. And the other hadith, they said, the hijrah will continue just like the Tawbah, until the sun will come from the west, not from the east. So, now I want to ask you, anyone knows about the hijrah? whether it will continue or not. Continue. So again, the hijrah, it means leaving the bad community and going to a good community where you can practice your deen. So if it's continue, and all the scholars agree about this point, why the Prophet Sallallahu said, لا هجرة بعد الفتح There is no immigration after the Concord of Mecca. Actually, this is the famous part of the hadith. The rest of the hadith, ولكن جهاد ونية But jihad and intention. And the scholars, they said, with the intention, like the intention of leaving the bad community to a good community with your intention, like for, for this intention. And there are some scholars, they said, at the beginning of Islam, before 
the Prophet Sallallahu conquered Mecca. It was obligatory upon each, upon each Muslim to leave Mecca. When, if he become Muslim, he has to leave Mecca and go to Al-Madin. And then after this, there is no obligatory to leave Mecca and goes to Al-Madinah, that's it. It's the end of the immigration. And the immigration it was very important because even the Sahaba, they used to have earth, you know, the inheritance between each others with the Mu'akha of the Prophet Sallallahu when he made like each one from Muhajirin, immigrant from Mecca, with the one from the Ansar, people who lives in Medina, make, make them as brothers. Like if, if one of them dies, he will get, the other one will get the inheritance. And that how, even was before the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the Arab people, they used to have, they call it Muala. You go to this tribe and you be from them. And if you die, your inheritance will be to them. So the Prophet Sallallahu at the beginning of Hijrah, he was making Mu'akha between Muhajirin and Ansar, and each one was a brother with the Hijrah, with the immigration. So he just make immigration, he will get this as a brother. And if he doesn't make immigration, he will not consider as Muslims, he will not get anything from the inheritance until the ayah revealed and then it stopped. And only and then only the people from the blood, like the brothers from the blood, who get the inheritance. So this is stopped. So there is some rules for immigration at that time. They it was like well known to each one. And the other hijrah, it's hijrah batiya, which is the, they call it invisible hijrah. It's to leave the bad thing. Just like the physical, when you have the intention to leave the bad society and go to right or the good society to practice your deen, and then there is something inside you have to stop you from doing ma'asi, from doing bad things and doing the good things. So if you, con if you leave and start doing good things, good deeds, you are muhajir, as the Prophet Sallallahu said. So the Prophet Sallallahu in this hadith, when he was talking about the muhajir here, he was talking about a muhajir for the other hijrah, not the, not the physical one, but the inside your heart when you leave the ma'asi and focus on the ta'at, on the good deeds. So now, because we talked about hijrah, and we are almost all muhajireen, or sons of muhajireen, except two, alhamdulillah, right? Almost muhajireen also. Yeah, because you left the sin life and comes to ta'at, good deeds, right? So that will be like, so is it allowed to stay here? Hmm? So we said hijrah is to leave the bad place. The bad place goes to the place where you can practice. practice. So according to this, we should leave. So you should leave? According to, I don't know, Allah knows. Okay. Allah knows. Anyone stop you from salat shaykh? Except your shaykh. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so, the fact here that we shouldn't stay in a place that we can't practice our Islam or there is a fitna that we can't handle. Two things, and this is very important because a lot of brothers, they think, oh, we can't really live here. We should live somewhere else where we can practice Islam. First of all, I want to, like, Tell you, like, even in Islamic countries, there is a few Islamic rules. Most of the rules, it's not Islamic. Like, a, 
the, the robbery by it's everywhere and it's not allowed if you go to the like family laws you will find a lot of non-islamic rules and if you go to the trade rules it's almost all brought from Western rules so the rule here if you can't practice Islam like let's say there is a country they said you are not allowed to be Muslim and it's not allowed to open a masjid and it's not allowed to pray and it's not allowed to fast then you have to leave this country you can't stay in this country and if there is a fitna you are traveling alone and you want to stay in a country there is a fitna you can't really save yourself then you are not allowed to stay in this country but if you can practice Islam and if there is a fitna but it's okay you can handle you can live with it then it's allowed to stay it's allowed to stay that's why even the scholars they said it's, it's okay to send the du'at that are scholars to the non-muslims country because they will uh, give the da'wah and if it's not allowed to go there actually it's not allowed to each one it's not allowed even to the du'at but they are going and it's not even even the sahaba the sahaba they, they went over all the places and asked people to be muslims so subhanAllah this hadith is, is very important <coughs> it's talking about how Muslims should really act or the real Muslims how should act because it's very easy to say I'm Muslim I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but apply this in your life here is the hard thing now one Muslim, like you just wait for any Muslim to touch you and then you start if it's not the hand the tank will do all the job for you we all together do some labor and this is very coming things and subhanallah we all do the same but we should really keep washing our time. It's very important, that's why I, I, I choose this hadith. Because the Prophet وسلم, he points a really good point to each Muslim. Each time you want to talk about a brother, remember, Muslim, man salim al muslimuna min lisani wa yadi, who leaves harming Muslims with his tongue and with his hand. This is the definition of Muslims. Any questions? No? Is that the only definition? It's not the only definition. It's, it's not like, because if you say this is the Muslim, that means you don't need to say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. This is to have real Islam in your hearts, to practice Islam. And this is a very good point because a lot like to be Muslim you have to believe in Allah doing salah right this is most things and some of the scholars they said establish prayer uh, doing Hajj you have you have to believe in the Islam teachings especially like what is confirmed there is no doubt about it in Islam but this is the Prophet Sallallahu he wants to point the real Islam the point that like the real Muslim that's why in the other hadith I mentioned he said Ayyul Islami Amdal he said Man Salim al Muslimun Amil Lisani Huyali which Muslim is like it's better he said the one who leaves harming people okay any question about Hijrah about staying here going somewhere else Okay, this is that one